G'day, Keithy here again. Thanks for joining me. We're gonna do another FIFO video, as promised in the last video, uh, which no doubt you've probably seen. If you haven't, the link is up there for that video. Uh, that is 10 questions answered from you guys. Okay, so this one, we're gonna do a bit of a, a mining myth, myth buster. So I've had a lot of messages about um, particular things to do with mining that I wanna sort of just bust those myths. Before I get into it, shout out to the boys I work with. You know who you are. Big shout out to Tranny too. How you going, mate? Uh, and also, if you haven't already, that's where you can get me. Chilling with Keithy up there uh, on Facebook. And you can message me, see what I'm up to, blah, blah, blah. All that kind of cool stuff. What I do in between these videos and when I get the time to get on um, Facebook and, and put some things up for you. But um, don't forget... You can chat to me there too. You can post on there, on that um, Chilling with Keithy page. Maybe you've got a question for someone else who's uh, who's on the Chilling with Keithy page, who's following it, liking it, um, all of that kind of stuff. Don't forget to subscribe too, guys. That way you won't miss any more of these videos. Mining Mythbuster, the first question today is, having a mate in the mines equals a job. Does it? Bop, um, no deal on that one. Okay, so maybe back in the day, like back, back in the day, that applied. But these days, unless you're like a top tier type HR or manager, um, that's not the case anymore. You can, you, can, um, you can have your mates apply for jobs and put you as references, and then you can chat when the HR team go through and do their hiring and firing thing. Uh, they might ask you, hey, how's this bloke? Is he all right? Or woman, sorry. Uh, are they any good to work with? Are they gonna do the job? Blah, blah, blah. But that's a consideration like any referee would be. Um, there's not too many people now that are like floor type workers, floor level workers, not the, the management level workers or superintendents who can say, oh, I've got a mate who's looking for a job, you should hire him and they get hired. So that's myth number one, busted. All right. I'm out with the flies here for number two. The mining myth buster. So number two is that they take people with no qualifications, with no experience. And unfortunately, I'm gonna pop that bubble there because that's not always the case. Uh, in fact, 99% of the time, it's not the case. Back in the day, they may have taken a few with no experience but these days, most of the mines are actually taking blokes who are ready to go, trained up in whatever special trade they need to be trained in. And unfortunately, it doesn't leave a lot of room for people with no experience. So a lot of these big mining companies these days are actually hiring contractors. So they're using contracting companies to bring in the blokes, to bring in the workforce, and using that as like a probation period. And if the blokes suit the job, suit the role, then they're hiring them from a contractor base onto the uh, the full-time thing. So unfortunately, experience really pays. All right, so number three on the Mythbuster list, the mining Mythbusters, is that you get a job and you're gonna get a guaranteed six-figure income. And that's not the case. Um, as with most workplaces, you've gotta sweep the floors before you can get the cream. And the same applies in the mining industry. And in fact, there are actually roles in the mining industry where you won't even earn a six-figure income, 100000 or more. Um, that's just part of the game. It's a part of any job, I guess. I mean, you can relate that to things like um, just admin assistant type roles. Would you pay $100,000 for someone just to, to answer the phone and, and say hi and be a pretty small at the front desk? No, I don't think so. Um, but then you come to the more technical roles, the roles that require trades, the roles that require specialised skills and things like that. That's where the money's at. Um, but you're not going to just walk in straight away and get that kind of income. You've got to work up to it. So don't think that if you get hired for a mining job, you're just going to work straight on a, a six-figure income and all is peachy. I think the only place you can sort of get that is if you go underground, but even then, some of the underground roles don't even start at 100000 So keep that in mind as well. Alrighty, so number four on the mining Mythbuster is that everything is done for you. Have a look around. Not everything's done for you. 
in fact, not a lot's done for you um, in some aspects at some mine sites or mining camps, that is. So I make my bed every morning. That's just a habit that I have. They don't come along and make your bed for you at all. They'll do, they'll do it on um, fly in and out day when if someone else is sharing your room. Um, some mine sites don't. They'll just leave the sheets. You just strip off your old ones and throw them outside and they'll give you some new ones for when you got to make it back up for yourself. Washing, I use a milk crate. It's washing day to day, so I'm gonna go and do that. I also have to supply my own washing powder. Some sites do, some sites don't. Um, we don't have to pay to use the washing machines, which is good. Our meals are cooked for us here. Um, I'll tell you, they're not the same as what they would be if you were at home and cooking a palmy for yourself or a roast or any of those meals for that matter. I'm not saying they're bad. I'm just saying, you know, Maybe there are some elements missing that you could do at home. Some camps actually ask you to cook for yourself. They might supply the food. Um, everywhere's different. Everywhere's different. So don't expect to come out in to the fly-in, fly-out world and have um, essentially a hotel service with a waitress, waiter, coming to your beck and call because that's just not the case. You've still got to do your own laundry. Uh, the exception, I think, is actually lead zinc because it's quite a dangerous product. They like the clean in, clean out thing. So you might find in, in mines where you're working with lead, um, they'll do all of that for you. They'll, they'll wash your clothes because of that, that um, high risk activity that it is, taking lead home. You wouldn't want that through your washing machine, that's for sure. So there you go, myth busted. All right, so the fifth myth that we're here to bust today is that everybody gets a production bonus here to break that one for you guys that's no deal on that now think about it like this i've been working here for 16 years in 10 days time uh, and this is one of the big three mining companies that i work for as you see that lovely little view in the background there uh, and never once have i received a production bonus in the time that i've been working here uh, they've called certain things different things to replace a, a pay rise. They might call it a performance payment or something like that. Uh, but never has a production bonus come my way for a, a fantastic year of production or anything like that. Uh, some of the smaller mining companies, funny enough, I've heard that uh, do offer the production bonuses. Um, but And the bigger ones as well, some of them do. But that doesn't happen everywhere. So if it's not in your... Uh, an enterprise agreement or if the union agreement or whatever it may be that's not a guarantee so don't rely on the production bonuses being a thing that's something that you're going to have to ask when you get hired all right so number six on the mining mythbuster even time rosters nope they're not just week on week off everywhere is different Everywhere is a different iteration of it. Um, some mines are doing two weeks on, one week off. Some mines are doing three weeks on, one week off. Some mines are doing two weeks on, two weeks off. Oil and gas is different again. Some coal mines are doing like a 10-5 thing. Um, you know, everywhere is different. If you're applying for a mining job, um, definitely check that out because it'll be listed in the, in the information when you do apply for it. Um, and same if you're doing contract work um, a lot of contractors only have four days off in a you know a three week period and then they move from mine to mine doing different work so there's another thing entirely I think contractors don't necessarily have a set roster it's sort of like a an on demand type roster so don't think that every mine is week on week off and that's what you get and let's get to number seven this one's got a little bit of detail in it so here we go uh, number seven working away from home equals um, you, that you're home, home more often with this is FIFO or mining in general if you live in a, a mining town this fly I've got about four flies on my legs no that's not the case so you've got to factor in a few things when you do the mining rosters is it great for relationships some relationships it can be good for if you're if you're spouse handles time away really well um it can be good because you know the old saying absence makes the heart grow fonder well that can be the case for some but it's been very hard uh for a lot of people and i mean i'm not talking just about myself in general i'm talking also about other people i've worked with who have um discussed 
things that happen at home with me. Um, you know, it's not it's not perfect, and you have to consider all of the factors in, into mining as well. Um, is it great to spend time with your mates? If they work with you, yeah, it is. You can spend all the time you like with them, but if they don't work with you, if they're doing like a um, Monday to Friday type job, it's unlikely that you're going to see a lot of your mates unless you live with them because they'll be doing, you know, working on Monday to Friday and then maybe on their Saturday they like to mow the lawn and, and do the pruning. Um, you know, it might be once a month that you do something with your mates. It just depends on, um, A, your circumstances. So if you've got kids as well, um, they generally take up a bit of time. Uh, and same with your mates. If your mates have got kids, if your mates have got a missus and priorities on the weekend, you know, they might have soccer on Saturdays and church on Sundays. Who knows? You know, there are a lot of things that make it actually harder to see your mates. And I can vouch for that, actually. Um, how often, if you're watching any of my mates, g'day, Tony. Most of my other mates actually don't even live uh, where I live anymore. So there you go. But, um, yeah, I mean, if you're a single person with no kids, you're probably going to have a very good social life because you're as free as a bird. But that doesn't necessarily mean your mates will. Okay, uh, the next part to this number seven Mythbuster uh, is that it's great for wifey at home. Uh, I don't think that's the case in my experience and from a lot of people that I've talked to. Um, guess what happens when you come out to work? Wifey's got to ha handle everything at home. She's got to handle the kids. She might work as well, she might not. She's got to take care of, of the mail. She's got to take care of that light bulb that's blown. Um, you know, the, the car might break down while you're away. Someone might get sick. She might get sick. Um, there are a whole range of things, the pets, and, and there's a lot of things. Um, but no, it's not. It's actually harder on your spouse at home not having you there. And I think that would be pretty true because if you're a pretty cool cat, you probably lend a fairly good hand while you're home. So they're not getting that while you're at work. So that's pretty hard on them. Are you sick of these flies yet? I'm sick of them. Tell them to bugger off. Recovery time and travel days. So, okay, most often you can write off your first day home when you're flying in there because you've got to wait to get on a plane or a bus or whatever it may be, whatever mode of transport takes you home. Um, and then by the time you get home, you're... You buggered. You've been working for a whole week, two weeks, three weeks, whatever your roster is. You can almost write off your first day off because you've got to spend that time recovering from that whole time you've been at work. Um, so say on a week on week off roster, for example, you might you don't really get that week off. You know you've got to recover. You've got to, and then the last day of your of your week off, generally you can write that off too because you've got to get ready to go back out to work and you muck around doing those last minute things before you fly out to work um, and more so with the even time rosters let's just use week on week off here as an example um, you get two weeks or more here when you fly home that you need to catch up on so for that whole week you're at work you can't do the chores at home you can't do this you can't check your mail it's really simple little things. You, you, you can't go and visit mates. Um, all of that kind of stuff. Now, technology and you know, social media and all of that kind of stuff is really good for keeping in touch with people. Um, but in, in terms of like going and visiting people or um, family or going to pay bills at a bank or whatever you might have to do on an ordinary week, if you work, say, Monday to Friday, you might be able to sneak to the bank on your lunch break or after work, you know, you might have your things set up so that the kids get picked up from school when you finish work. Well, you can't do that when you're a fly and fly-out worker. But also with your kids, with your missus, with your family, with your friends, with your, your chores at home, with your R&R &R time, um, you've got to squeeze all of that into one week home in this particular example. You got two weeks to catch up on, so the lawn's going to be really long. Most times you come home if you have sprinklers or whatever. All of that kind of stuff. There's a lot to take in 
Um, but there's seven myths busted. I don't know why I called it myth buster, but anyway, they're, they have all come from um, questions that people have asked me. Um, so, whereas the previous video I was answering questions, this time I'm more busting myths because a lot of people, the big one that I get is, if I get a job in the mines, I'm going to earn $100,000 from so many people. And that's just not the case. And I've had to say to them, look, no, that's not the case. And, and most of these people are telling me that they have got no experience. And, and they're the ones that are asking, what job should I do? And all of those kind of things. And that's questions that I can't answer because I don't know you. You can tell me what your strengths and weaknesses are, but I still might not be able to say, oh, this would be a great job for you. If I get a message from young people, I've had messages from teenagers. Um, often they're looking for a trade. Well, perfect, because you can get an apprenticeship. And I can say, yeah, great, go and uh, try and get an apprenticeship as an electrician or a fitter or you know any of the other apprenticeships that are offered. Uh, you, you could go as a light vehicle mechanic. Some sites actually maintain their own vehicles. Um, and, and that's a really good way for young people to get in. Um, but, yeah. I hope I've answered a few uh, myths dispelled a few anyway don't be shy with the messages um i've still got them coming i got one while i was recording this um don't be shy with that guys i'm always happy to answer if i can get to the the um phone in time if i'm not busy if i'm not working or relaxing on my week off or creating another one of these videos for you guys all right enjoy guys i've got to go to bed now and get up and go and do it all again hope you have a good day don't forget to like subscribe please and that way you don't miss out on the next video and i will see you next time take care bye